Hi, welcome to the Swatch On Swatch Off podcast. I'm Charles, your host, and I hope you stay for a while. So just to jump right into things, I'd like to tell you what's on my hooks and needles. Uh, oh, well, what's been on them, I guess, to start with. So first, uh, talking about finished objects. So I have finished this little beret cute little pom-pom on top for a toddler and uh, I also using the same yarn finished this little okay it looks like a small a large swatch so you could just call it a swatch but I'd like to call it a lovey blanket because it's perfect you know for the kid that just wants to have a blanket next to them and you don't want them dragging it through the dirt through the dirt it's like pig pen from charlie brown anyway so um i finished knitting this last week and this is the yarn and i'll be talking more about this later on in the podcast all right and crochet, what have I finished crocheting? All oh, right. So I finished these a while ago, but I have finally finished writing the pattern and I'm going to be publishing it on Ravelry very soon. So these are blocks for the round peg in a square hole or the square peg in a round hole, however you want to see it. So just a crochet square motif that you can do with three colors or two colors. And my friend Rebecca, where's the other ones here? My friend Rebecca did one in all one color so that you can see what it looks like solid. And this is one in one of those self-striping yarns. And this is one again with three different colors. So I'll be publishing that pattern on Ravelry very soon. If you like making uh, blankets and cushion covers and anything else out of square motifs, then uh, you might be interested in that. And I know like some people have a hard time taking a circle and making it into a square. So I just experimented going back and forth. There's a square, then a circle, then a square, then a circle, and then ended up with a square again. All right, so that or those are my finished objects. Okay, right now on my hooks or a hook uh, is kind of a secret. I can't show you the finished project yet or how far I am, but look at this lovely yarn. So this is Koigu wool it's their um, sock weight yarn and um, koigu is a canadian uh, yarn company um, and they've been around for quite a while and they have very 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 colorful palette i love the yarns and so i am designing a crochet design out of this which will be coming out in their next collection their next magazine Sorry, I can't show you anything else about that. And as far as what I have on my uh, knitting needles, well, um, I can't find them right now. They're in one of my project bags, but I have a pair of socks. And then I basically have to go through my uh, UFO in hibernating collection just to see which knitting project I should pick up and continue to work on next. So um, what else? Oh. Going back to these projects here. So this is Universal Yarns Uptown DK Magics. They have uh, other Uptown DK series. There's solid colors, uh, 47 to 51 colors. I can't remember exactly, somewhere in there. Um, and then there's also Uptown DK colors, which are long repeats uh, self-striping yarn, not gradient. Um, they they have a sharp, abrupt changes. But um, anyway, I wrote a review of this yarn for the blog knitmuch.com, and you can go there starting April 
23rd and start reading the blog posts about this yarn. So this is a fabulous acrylic. It's it is manufactured or labeled as anti-pilling. And so I put it through I put it through its paces. Uh, you'll be able to read about what it looks like after I washed and dried it in the machines. The label says to wash in cold water and gentle and just to tumble dry on low. Well, I put it in with a heavy uh, kitchen cloth load with scalding hot water and through the dryer and you'll have to read the blog to see what happened to it. But anyway, this yarn is definitely my new favorite double knitting weight acrylic for, for kids sweaters and for uh, gifts for people who don't want to bother with hand washing. So here, this blanket, uh, I call this the W ripple or the W stitch because you can see the definite W in the uh, the ripples there. Uh, this pattern will be on the blog post and I didn't make an exact pattern for this hat but I gave a recipe, <coughs> excuse me, a recipe for creating a hat by making a donut first in garter stitch using short short rows and then how to create that nice little sharp ridge on the end of the beret. So uh, go to the blog next week and you'll be able to find the recipe and make any size of beret that you want. All right, next, um, oh, upcoming yarn reviews. So my wife is working on a huge blanket for a friend for a wedding gift and I don't want to show it to you yet because she's only gotten the the there's a scalloped edging and then two and then a lace repeat all the way through the blanket and she's only gotten one and a half of the lace repeats done so you really can't see it clearly yet. So I'm waiting for it to progress a little further and then I'll put it up in the next episode. Anyhow, we uh, the the pattern is from Mary Maxim. And it uses a Mary Maxim yarn, which is another anti-pilling acrylic, which I really like. However, they didn't have a gray in the in the yarn. Um, just a minute, let me see what the yarn's called. Okay, it's called uh, Ultra Mellow Spun DK, and um, it's a seventy percent acrylic and. 30% nylon. So the nylon is what makes it very soft and squishy and it also reduces the pilling, at least for this type of yarn. Uh, anyway, the Mellow Spun had no silver gray and no dark gray, no charcoal, and that's the color that the bride wanted uh, for her blanket. So um, I had to order online and we ordered from Love Knitting in the UK and uh, it's actually, for Canadians, it's cheaper to order mini yarns from the UK than from the US because there is um, a higher, like we can bring more in before we have to pay steep customs um, custom fees on it. And shipping from the UK is amazingly affordable. So um, anyway, we ordered uh, a, a nice silver gray yarn. It's a Cascade yarn. Uh, North Shore? Sorry. I'll, anyway, when I show you the blanket, I'll tell you what the yarn's made out of. So, uh, if we ordered a certain amount, a uh, dollar amount, then the shipping would be free to Canada. So, we looked at all the yarn for this blanket and it wasn't quite the amount that we needed to spend to get shipping. So I was able to top it up with a couple more things. So it's hard to find Stylecraft in Canada. There's a few stores that carry it, but generally it's not. Uh, so this is Stylecraft uh, Cotton 4-ply Classic. And it's a 100% cotton, not mercerized. It's a soft cotton. It doesn't say Pima or anything like that. So I'm going to review this in the future. 
And then I went to Michael's and saw this new to me yarn called Cambria by Loops and Threads. And I'm very excited because it's a number two. Finally, I don't know who's been listening or not listening, but it's not all worsted weight. It's so nice to get finer weight yarns. Um, and not everybody wants to buy wool. And there's lots of finer weight wools, but there's not so many finer weight uh, washable fibers. So this is a, a fingering weight, basically. It's like 32 stitches to four inches. So I'm excited to be, so I'm going to try knitting something with this and crocheting something with this and reviewing it. So, okay, next I'd like to do a book review. Some episodes I'll do a knitting book and some a crochet book. This one is going to be a crochet book. So this is Top Down Crochet Sweaters and it's by Dora Ornstein, my friend. And this is a fabulous sweater. Ah, sorry, sweater book, sweater pattern book. Um, I should have counted before starting the recording. Um, how many patterns are there? Well, I'm not going to keep looking for counting exactly. I think there's about 20 patterns, if not 22. And here you can see some of these are all top-down crochet patterns. And what's fabulous is that she also um, does some of them for plus sizes. And she, there's an extensive section on how to modify uh, patterns to fit larger sizes or smaller sizes. So let me just show you some of the different patterns. This is a top down with a nice lace yoke. Here's a top down that is with cable motifs. Now, this is what's exciting about this book. So here you can see this is this, the pattern called Janelle and it's on a plus size model. And the same sweater is worn by a petite person so in some cases you can just make the same pattern and it can be worn by many different sizes. Okay, so this nice lace top uh, comes in how many sizes? It goes up to extra large. So if you needed it uh, two, three, four X, then you'd have to follow some of her advice for modifying it. But she uses a very similar lace motif and makes an open duster or cardigan, basically. Here it is, full body. And uh, so that's for the plus size model. And that goes up to 2XL, another one or a pair. So you notice the pattern name Ava and Bettina. All of the sweaters are named after opera characters, female leads, or at least important female characters in operas, because uh, Dora is a singer and a voice trainer. So uh, she kind of took her love of the opera world and put it into crochet. I thought it was a really cool idea. So here is a cool one. You can see the plus size model has the sleeves rolled up, and this one has some bobbles on it. So you can see how Dora has a really good understanding of drape. Like, look how nicely that fabric is gathering where she's putting her hand in the, in the pocket and how nicely it just drapes uh, off of her bust. And then here's the back. So she widens it for the hips and makes it a nice, uh, not too loose, not too baggy. So uh, Dora's philosophy is that women shouldn't just throw on large clothes that make them look like sacks of potatoes. 
and um, it isn't too hard in crochet to actually figure out. So I just wanted to read uh, something that she said here. Many women concerned about their figures end up making very large tent-like garments that cover everything adequately, but may, may not look very stylish. Consider this, however, you can wear a shapely garment that's very flattering if you understand how to control ease. So, and then she goes on extensively to talk about what ease is. And I think this is a missing bit of information that has not been in very many crochet garment books or even in that many knitting books for that matter. She continues, uh, I personally love to see large curvy bodies wearing open neck garments that fit closely at the shoulders and bust and then flare out to the hip or thighs. You'll find several designs here styled this way where extra ease from the waist down is built into the design. This style is flattering if you're pear shaped as it shows off the upper portion of your figure. If you have a boxy torso, the expanding lines in these garments create a shapelier silhouette for your body. Just plug in the desired measurements you want at the bust with just a bit of ease and you should be good to go. So anyway, uh, you can purchase this on Amazon online and at many uh, retailers. I do not have affiliate links or anything like that. So you're just going to have to do the searching for your uh, for yourself. Uh, the title, uh, if I get to making show notes, you'll be able to find the title there. Um, and so at some point I will get to uh, putting up show notes, but it might not be as fast as you might want to get this book for you yourself. And there's it's not all wintry yarns. She does go into a lot of depth about how to choose a yarn that gives beautiful drape. Um, she does worsted weight all the way down to some lace weight stuff. Um, but all of that is uh, discussed in a lot of detail here. So um, anyway, I think that it is a really worthy book and there's so many things in there. I'm sure I know a lot of people hesitate because today everything is download this, download that, free this, free that, free this, free that. But I have not seen yet one free PDF, one free YouTube pattern that fits a plus sized person in a flattering way. Lots of the big loose card. And I know fashion is going back to the big loose and whatever. And um, my wife likes loose fitting, but she doesn't like so loose that all this extra fabric makes her look a whole lot bigger. And that's one concern for lots of crocheters that it just starts looking bigger and bigger and bigger and bulkier. So, um, well, if you find some free patterns that prove me wrong, please put them in the comments. Actually, in the next 24 to 48 hours from when I post this, um, please post comments into the... Uh, YouTube comment place and um, or come over to the Ravelry group for this podcast swatch on swatch off and um, we can just we can discuss it you can prove me wrong I'd love to see free patterns out there that are flattering so anyway that's my very positive review for this book and then last thing of all oh no two more things uh, an announcement I um, uh, I have a partner in crime as far as hosting a Facebook group and the group is called Lifelong Crocheters and my friend Rebecca is a co-host in that group and we are going to have our first crochet along and I will put a picture of what we're going to be making. Um, and the designer, I can't remember her name, and the South, the South African Yarn Company, I'll put their name all here. And um, anyway, bad, bad podcaster, didn't do my notes very thoroughly. So we're going to be making this item in the month of May. 
and uh, we even got somebody to give us a coupon code for a discount for some yarn. So um, come on over to Facebook, search in groups for lifelong crocheters and ask to join. There are three screening questions to make sure that you're not a hacker. So please look for those questions and answer them and, uh, and then we'll let you into the group. And uh, you can uh, go to Curly Q Crochet, that's Rebecca's Facebook page, or Charles Vought Designs, that's mine, and find any announcements and updates. But the actual crochet along will take place inside the Facebook group. And um, yeah, so I wanted to let you guys know about that. And last, I'm not going to rant on every podcast episode, but I have a little bit of a rant. So, do you know the name of this stitch pattern? Or this stitch pattern? Let me rant a little bit first and then I'll <laughs> talk about it. Okay, so when you blow your nose, what do you use? Do you use a tissue or do you use Kleenex? Is there any difference in your mind about Oh, pass me the Kleenex, pass me the box of Kleenex, or pass me the box of tissues. I grew up where Kleenex was the name of the item. And so the brand name Kleenex took over um, the utilitarian item uh, of tissue. And in at least in my family, and I know in many other families, we just used the word Kleenex. Even though there are other brands, if we saw another brand, we would still call it Kleenex. <laughs> so, um, that has happened in a few cases with a few items. Uh, for example, I've been told uh, that in the southern states, so I don't know where the line is of the change, that the word Coke is not just the brown soft drink with the, the sugar and the high caffeine content that Coke is used for anything. So you want a Coke and then they'll, I say, I want a Coke and they'll say, what kind? Like 7-Up, Ginger Ale, <laughs> Mountain Dew. They call, even the non-brown ones are called Coke. Maybe even Pepsi is called Coke. I'm not sure how extensive that uh, application of a brand name to a generic product happens, but I've heard that that's the case. So, and where a large community does it, it makes sense and it happens. And um, and it's happening in the crochet world with, a, with this stitch pattern. Because this is called the brick stitch. Or it's also been called the crazy stitch or the block stitch. Although there is about 500 different block stitches because anybody who crochets and comes up with a new name looks at the little square and calls it a block stitch. But <laughs> that's another rant. So this is uh, the crazy stitch. This one here is different than this one. If you look closely, these ones are a lot smaller. But what's happened is crocheters now that for the most part have learned from YouTube videos or have learned maybe in the last two or three years from friends and books and whatever, have learned from people who've been crocheting recently, call this the C2C stitch. Well, C2C stands for corner to corner. And corner to corner is a direction of crocheting. I'm crocheting from one corner to the other corner. It has nothing to do with the name of the stitch. It's not even the stitch pattern. So technically, a stitch is one of the, well, there's more than six, but there's six principal ones, you know, single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, or treble, half treble, double crochet, slip stitch, double treble, tri triple treble, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, those are the main stitches. And then combinations of those are uh, called, and that repeat motifs, regularly across a row or in a circle. Those are called stitch patterns. And so, all right, we have three double crochets, a chain and uh, a slip stitch or three trebles, a chain, a slip stitch. 
And so, yes, those all combine and make these squares. But the brick stitch or crazy stitch, and I don't know which way it was worked first, whether horizontally or diagonally, has been around for a long time. And it was called the brick, brick stitch or crazy stitch for a long time. Anyways, then on the internet, some phenomena happened where people started making uh, blankets with the diagonal version of the crazy stitch and the brick stitch. And I don't know whether it was a publication or a YouTuber or what called it corner to corner, which makes sense because you start in one corner, increase out and then decrease back. Complete sense to call it corner to corner, but corner to corner is the direction of the knitting. But now people are calling anything that looks like this corner to corner. Oh, that's the corner to corner stitch. And they'll say, this is the corner to corner stitch, but it's not, it's, these are half trebles or half double crochets and two chains. And they're worked kind of into little blocks, but a little bit more like circles. And they're also worked back and forth diagonally to create that effect. This is a little uh, ducky pattern I came up with. Again, this is done with the, the um, I don't know, I guess the mini brick stitch or the mini crochet, crochet stitch because it uses half doubles instead of double crochets. And so this is what got me thinking about it. I wanted to post this swatch and this is also worked from corner to corner but it's nowhere near like this stitch it's a complete different stitch pattern so i'm not going to call this the corner to corner stitch and i'm not going to call this a version of this corner to corner stitch i have even heard people calling horizontal versions where you don't work corner to corner where you start and work in rows with the brick stitch and they've said oh that's the horizontal version of the c to c no the horizontal version came first okay <laughs> maybe i'm going on a little bit too much but it's just like you know if you had a ford escape or a ford explorer and then the Ford Fiesta came by and the Ford Edge drove by and you said on oh, and I said to my kids I said oh look there's a mini Ford Explorer oh and look it it doesn't really have a back it's it's more like a sedan shape you know but it's a small Ford Explorer instead of calling it a Ford Fiesta so you can't take the one name and apply it to everything but I know I'm going to get a lot of hate comments and disagreement but whatever I've been around 40 I've been around 50 years but I've been crocheting for 46 and I've been around the block a little bit a longer before the internet came around and the, so you know and I guess I'm probably just shouting into the wind because <laughs> just like other tissue paper companies maybe have tried to say it's not Kleenex it's tissue paper and nothing stuck or the soft drink companies have tried to say it's not coke it's mountain dew um you know it might just be a lost cause but i just had to get it off my chest well thanks for coming by swatch on swatch off and i uh, hope you go to the youtube comments and um leave some comments there and uh yeah thanks for coming by bye